Welcome to American Technologies Incorporated's educational video on water losses. This video was created by ATI to assist the insurance industry in the understanding and adjustment of one of the most common property claim situations, water losses. To produce this video, ATI utilized its own resources as well as those of many of the insurance companies with whom it does business. ATI appreciates the cooperation of its insurance company and experienced adjuster partners in the development of this video. According to the Insurance Information Institute, water and freezing losses represent approximately 30% of the total number of property damage losses reported to property insurance companies in the years 2009 through 2013, the most recent years for which statistical information is available. The percentage can vary depending on the total number of fire and wind catastrophe losses in any given year. But in any given year, the total number of water losses stays remarkably consistent, coming in either first or second in the total number of claims. The average cost of these water losses over the same period of time is around $7,500. Again, per the Insurance Information Institute. Water losses come in all shapes and sizes. Rain or other weather-related claims certainly make up a large portion of reported water losses each year. For the purposes of this video, we will concentrate on the other prominent cause of water losses, some type of leak or failure in the property's plumbing system that caused enough water to escape to cause damage to the property. As with most claims reported to an insurance company, the first, and in many respects the most important decision that a claims adjuster needs to make about a water loss is whether the insurance policy in force at the time of the loss provides coverage for the occurrence. While the majority of insurance companies have their own distinct policy forms for personal lines and commercial property losses, the majority of them have similar requirements for coverage to apply to water damage to physical property. First, the loss must be sudden and accidental. In general, losses that can be proved to have been caused by a slow leak over a period of weeks or months are not covered. Examples of sudden and accidental losses would include such common scenarios as a broken water supply line or the accidental overflow of a washing machine or dishwasher. An example of a slow leak that may not be covered would be a small drip under the sink that has been ongoing for a long period and has now caused enough damage for the property owner to consider filing a claim. Second. The loss cannot be caused by flooding or surface water. Virtually all insurance policies written by private insurance companies have some type of flood exclusion. The National Flood Insurance Program, or NFIP, which is administered by the Federal Occupational Safety and Health Administration, which is now part of the Department of Homeland Security, is set up to insure property owners against the risk of flooding. There are many other conditions, risks, and exclusions that may apply to any given water loss. It is the adjuster's responsibility to fully investigate each loss on its own merits and make a decision about coverage based on the specific policy form in effect at the time of loss. If coverage is afforded on a loss, then the next decision for most insurance adjusters is whether any type of emergency service or mitigation is warranted. While it may be the insured's responsibility to protect the property from further loss, it is often in both the insured and the insurance company's best interests to provide immediate service to help minimize any further damage. Whether your insurance company works directly with restoration partners or advises the property owner to obtain his or her own services, most reputable water restoration contractors have received training and comply with the repair recommendations for water losses as published by the Institute of Inspection Cleaning and Restoration Certification, or IICRC. These standards promote consistency in the application of water mitigation and drying techniques. The owner of this property was out of town when the supply line to a sink in the upstairs bathroom broke. Water continued to run for two days until the property owner came home to find a waterlogged house. The property owner was able to turn off the main water supply to the house and immediately called both a plumber and her insurance company. During the initial telephone conversation with a customer that reports a loss of this type, it is important for the insurance representative to ask the customer to have the plumber save any part of the plumbing system that the plumber needs to replace for purposes of investigation and possible subrogation. Remember that most property owners do not know what subrogation means, so you may have to explain subrogation or the opportunity to pursue recovery from an entity or individual that may be responsible for the cause of the loss. In this case, the failed water supply line should be saved and photos and or video taken of what the plumber finds when he or she arrives at the property. The failed supply line could be defective, could have been installed incorrectly, 
or may have just worn out. There are times when the adjuster may need to use an origin and cause investigator to assist with this part of the investigation. When this loss was reported to the insurance company, an initial decision was made that this loss was probably covered by the property owner's homeowner's insurance policy. Based on this initial decision and the fact that the property owner disclosed significant damage to the two-story house and their belongings, a decision was made to recommend American Technologies Incorporated for emergency services, water loss mitigation, and possibly contents packout and storage. After the plumber, it is quite common for the restoration and mitigation company to be the next professional that a property owner will meet following a water loss. The insurance representative should explain the purpose of the restoration company to minimize the damages and, to the extent possible, make the property habitable as quickly as possible. The property owner should also be informed that the emergency services mitigation company will require a work authorization from the property owner before any work can begin. In many cases, if the damages will clearly be more than the customer's deductible, then the property owner should be informed whether the mitigation vendor will be collecting the deductible from the property owner. Depending on the insurance company's operating practices, an outside adjuster may be assigned to inspect, investigate, and evaluate this loss. If not, it will be the responsibility of an inside adjuster to make the applicable decisions about the coverage and damages. Either way, the odds are that the mitigation company will have completed some or all of the necessary work prior to any inspection by an insurance company representative. American Technologies arrives at the loss and begins to evaluate the damage and the most effective restoration techniques. All right, so we'll start doing our moisture inspection in here. We'll uh, do our moisture reading so we can further determine what walls were affected and we, where we have any moisture content. Uh, if I could have you start taking some pictures over the room, please. ATI must make decisions about what, if any, drying equipment to use and how much, if any, of the actual structure must be removed, either because it cannot be adequately dried so that a proper repair can be made or because the damaged property is already beyond repair. ATI has a number of tools that are available to assist in this determination. The most commonly used are moisture meters, which can measure the percentage of moisture being held in specific areas of the property, including the drywall, flooring, and framing. American Technologies will also take humidity readings of the air inside the various rooms that have water damage. The higher the amount of humidity, in relation to the normal humidity expected in non-damaged portions of the house, as well as the outside environment, will also help determine the type and amount of drying equipment that should be used. In general, the more humid the environment, the more dehumidification equipment may be necessary. In some cases, especially where there are large areas of non-porous materials, such as steel and concrete, specialty drying equipment, such as desiccant dehumidifiers, may be called for. Another tool that ATI uses is a thermographic camera. This camera takes what amounts to X-ray type of images of the amount of heat behind a wall, floor, or ceiling. Cool areas can indicate places where water may be located but may not yet be visible through the finished surface. ATI completes a moisture map which is used in the placement of the necessary equipment. Along with this map, ATI completes a log indicating the moisture ratings throughout the damaged areas for the period of time from when they first arrive at the loss until the time that adequate drying has occurred. It is not uncommon for the amount, type, and location of equipment to change over the period of time it takes to dry the premises. The reasons for this should be clear by reviewing the moisture map and the log. American Technologies is often able to place the necessary equipment and complete any other mitigation work while manipulating furniture and other household items or by covering them and leaving them in place. But sometimes it may be necessary to remove the personal property and store it in a safe place. Or, as was the case with this water loss, a combination of events was necessary. ATI was able to leave and cover a pool table and some of the kitchen appliances. Much of the rest of the property had to be removed and either stored in the garage or at an off-site location. Any covered damages to the personal property will also need to be evaluated as part of the adjustment of the loss. Also, it was reported and confirmed by the ATI project manager that the property was not habitable as a direct result of the water damage. If the insurance policy contains coverage for additional living expenses or similar coverage, then that portion of the claim must also be resolved.
Many of the moisture readings for this property indicated that the drywall, flooring, and other finished carpentry items were so saturated, in fact, showing extreme moisture readings of 99.9%, .9 that the property could not and should not be repaired. Significant amounts of the drywall, insulation, and flooring had to be removed. The IICRC defines water losses into a variety of categories and classes to assist the vendors and insurance carriers in determining the best steps to take in the restoration process. The loss was a direct result of a clean water break, which would normally indicate a Category 1 water loss, requiring minimal restoration actions. But because the loss occurred over a two-day period and touched many parts of the house, ATI determined that it was truly a Category 2 loss with some dirty sediment that needed to be accounted for. An antimicrobial agent was needed as part of the mitigation process. Special Personal Protective Equipment, or PPE, was not required as would be had this been a Category 3 loss which typically involves sewage. Water losses are also classified by the IICRC in the difficulty in doing the drying, with a Class 1 loss involving a small surface area, to a Class 3, where water came through the ceiling and or damaged more than two feet of some of the wall surfaces. This loss was clearly a Category 3 loss, and so would involve a significant amount of mitigation efforts. The insurance adjuster will review the estimate prepared by the ATI project manager while also having access to the moisture ratings and reports. American Technologies always takes many photos and, if requested, some videos of the damages. A physical inspection of the property following the mitigation efforts is usually the most accurate way to determine the amount owed for the completed and necessary work. What I always like to ask my insurers on the front end is what is your main concerns in this process? I know you've never been through this before, but I'm sure you've had time to think about that, what your concerns are. Yeah, so I thought about that a little bit after we got off the phone, and a couple things for me are definitely getting the family back into the house. How long is that going to take? and how much money is it going to cost me to have all of this stuff done? It's a lot of damage. Okay. Well, I'd like to answer those for you. If you don't mind, can we get started in the kitchen where the majority of the damage is at and start scoping it out? Yeah, definitely. It's this way. All right, let's go. When the inspection is made to create the estimate to repair the property to pre-loss condition, it is important to be empathetic with the loss the customer is experiencing and be fully aware of any specialty repairs that may need to be considered such as to the electrical system and heating, ventilation and cooling, or HVAC systems. If the property was built prior to 1981, it is also possible that some testing for asbestos or lead paint may be necessary, even before any mitigation is done. Melissa, we're now at the end of the water mitigation dry-out process. Your home is now completely dried and secured, ready for the second phase, the build-back process. As the insurance representative on the water loss, you should be prepared to discuss the next steps that will be necessary, including estimating the structure damages, working with the insured selected contractor on the repairs, and resolving any covered personal property and additional living expense claims. American Technologies hopes you have found this video to be informative and helpful to you as you adjust water damage claims. We again want to remind you that the information in this video is general in nature and that each loss must be adjusted and evaluated individually based on the facts and circumstances of that individual claim.